Today we are testing the most efficient cylinder in the world. Yeah, it's been designed by Adam Chapman himself, the chief heat geek. So it's no surprise that it's taken the market by storm. If you want one of those, you better start queuing up fast because they are selling out quicker than your new government. Later, Adam's going to be here and he can tell us exactly what makes this cylinder so unique. He's also bringing the infamous minister with him. One of only two in existence. Mm. So yeah, you better keep watching till the end. This is my existing Joule cylinder. I've been using it for the last eight months. 200 liters of capacity, 50 mil insulation, and a heat pump heat exchanger, so a larger coil. This is heat geek cylinder, also 200 liters, also 50 millimeters of insulation, and the same diameter of 470 millimeters. As you can see, it's quite a bit taller because the heat exchanger inside the cylinder is much bigger, so we need more volume inside for the same amount of stored water. This cylinder has been monitored since day one on what is called an open energy monitor. This is a consumer unit that serves my heat pump and, and the garage. And on the left here, you see a meat meter that meters electrical energy going to the heat pump and the heat pump circulator and heat pump controls. And here we've got a uh, flow meter and heat meter and also temperature sensor on the flow, temperature sensor on the return and all of those uh, components, they plug in into Imon HP box and that sends all the data to our software on the server. So we can monitor the system performance and we can see the efficiency of the system on heating and hot water. We can see flow and return temperatures. We can see flow rates. And that allows us to access historical data on performance of my heat pump with this cylinder and compare it to the cylinder we are about to install. We are now ready to take this cylinder out and install the heat geek cylinder and see how it performs. But hold on, I think there's someone at the door. Adam, could you tell us what makes this cylinder better and different to mm. other heat pump cylinders on the market? And please explain it the way that a five-year-old could understand. Sure. Uh, so um, what's different about the super cylinder is that it has a much bigger heat exchanger. So for, with all hot water cylinders, they have a coil that runs around them internally that your heat pump or boiler will heat up uh, that heats up the hot water. Because we've made that coil extra, extra, extra long, actually it's, a, it's, it's two coils, one inside the other, um, uh, there's much less resistance for it to try and let go of the heat. Now what that means is that the heat source, boiler or heat pump, can stay cooler and transfer the same amount of energy because it's not being sort of pushed back on by uh, not having enough room to let go of the energy. So a much bigger heat exchanger, that's the first part. Um, uh, the second part is that we've pushed that uh, uh, coil right down as low as possible into the cylinder. If you open up any other cylinder, you might get one loop that goes down uh, or you certainly have a pocket there that um, you could fit more uh, coil in. Um, and the reason we've done that is because of the third point is that we focused on stratification. Stratification is where we try and keep the colder, fresher water that comes in separate from, from the hotter water. And by doing that, um, you allow any heat that's going around the coil to be um, uh, to get to this cooler point and uh, it can suck more heat more efficiently out of that um, uh, heat source because of the temperature difference. It's also got a dip tube, a wide bore dip tube, so it comes into the cylinder, slows down and then we deposit it to the bottom where it, it slowly but surely f uh, fills up the cylinder, keeping that, that cold pocket at the bottom as defined as possible. Uh, rather than shooting in and just stirring up and getting an average temperature. To break it down into the most simple parts, we're keeping the cold water block at the bottom as, as cool as possible and as separate as possible, and then uh, supplementing that with this gigantic heat exchanger um, to give uh, as much possible opportunity to get the heat out of the heat source into the hot water. Hopefully that made sense. Um, uh, it's, it's, it is relatively simple once you get your head around it. I'll ask my five-year-old if he understood. <laughs> How did you come up with, uh, with the idea for that cylinder? Because I don't think there is 
And are there cylinders with cars of that size on the market? I, I've never seen one. Yeah, I've seen them in commercial, but on mm -hmm. much bigger cylinders. This is all the basic uh, theory that we teach on the training, um, uh, which could be applied to lots of different scenarios. In this one, we've used it to um, uh, show how we could size something to get maximum efficiency. Not that you should do that every single time. You might have other challenges such as size uh, or the space that you have available for hot water. Um, so rather than the idea of the cylinder, it was more uh, an example of how you use the training that we teach um, to solve our problem. And this one was the problem was uh, how do we get the most efficiency uh, from hot water? And that is the uh, kind of most obvious uh, results. We could have gone down another route, we could have used plate heat exchanger uh, involving a pump etc but for me it's all about simplicity, we want less to go wrong uh, and what's more simple than a piece of metal running through a cylinder. We know that that cylinder has been a massive success, New York just can't keep up with mm. orders. Mm. When you first came up with this idea or maybe when you had the first one prototype installed in your house, mm. Did you think it would become popular or did you make it just to see how efficient it can get? I wanted the high scop because I'm a scop chaser. Uh, and just to make a point on that, having the high scop isn't necessarily, it's, it's really you want the lowest running cost. But if you can achieve the most scop, you've probably got the most control over your scop. Then you can choose the balance between scop or efficiency and your price mm -hmm. of uh, pence per kilowatt hour, if that makes sense, rather than just putting it down to tariff. Did I expect it to be this popular? No, I expected other manufacturers to go, oh yeah, we should do that, and mm. just immediately come up with a, a, a similar solution. But actually it turns out after speaking to manufacturers, their processes and uh, manufacturing lines are very, very um, uh, refined and built for the, uh, the, the solutions that I have already. And to get something into production, takes you know two possibly three years it, is it correct that you are actually not making any money from that design and also is it true that you are happy to give that design to any manufacturers yeah the whole point was we wanted a cylinder to fix that specific um, uh, problem or solution uh, so it was made to show the industry that it can be done and that these are the results go on industry go and make it we don't need to make money I don't want to move into products it doesn't look very fun to me. Um, uh, so yeah, we don't make any money from that cylinder. That's uh, all, all down to Newark. And as with any product like this or anything else we make in the future, it's always open for all manufacturers. We'll even consult with them. We just want this for our installers to go in and do the best job they could possibly do. It's not about money for us. We're, we're just trying to do the best possible uh, installs that make the most sense for the homeowner and for the installer. You brought us another product today. As a matter of fact, uh, we'll get it here in front of me acting as a stand for my laptop. <laughs> one of only two in existence Minister and the smaller version, so the most extreme one, that I'll yes. be testing on this channel. So you better subscribe not to miss that video of my wife shouting cold water in the shower. It's going to be happened? a wife test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's okay. hope it doesn't Don't tell happen. Don't <laughs> <laughs> uh, We're going to just tease this product today. So the, the mini store is exactly the same again as the, the super store. It's using the fundamental physics uh, that we teach on the course to solve a situation. So with the mini store, it's about space. If you haven't got that much uh, room for, for hot water, um, you can use this technique or this design to solve that problem. Anyone can help themselves to the design. It's not particularly clever, but this is just an example of not how clever I am or anything like that, of the basic physics we teach in our training. Well said. Thank you, Adam. Thanks, Sai. Cheers. Nice one, mate. We have to run additional flow and return to the mini store, additional hot and cold to the mini store, so we can connect both cylinders, mini cylinder and our heat geek cylinder uh, in series. They'll never operate at the same time, obviously, but I'm gonna put valve them off so I can use one or the other. That looks straight. That cylinder comes out a little bit out, but that's the price you pay for testing equipment. 
We are getting their last connection on cold water. It's connected. Mari's still here helping me. We're gonna turn the water on now and test it. It's always good to test your system on Friday at half past five because it never goes wrong. Marie is saying that the cylinder is almost full. She can apparently say where the water is by what? Just the pitch of the noise. You can hear it. Where, where's the water now? Just like here. You sure? I think that <laughs> pitch is maybe there. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> I'm happy to report we finished. Cylinders full of water, systems full of water, running on heating now. No leaks. We are slowly getting good at it, I think. I'm gonna go and turn the hot water on now. I'm so curious on how efficiently it will run its first cycle on the heating cylinder. I've been running the heat geek cylinder now for eight days. But before we talk about its performance, there's just one more test I'm yet to run. Because throughout those eight days, I was only concentrating on maximum efficiency of producing hot water. Now, I want to ignore the efficiency and see how quickly I can recharge that cylinder using full power available at my five kilowatt heat pump. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna make sure the cylinder is fully depleted first by measuring what comes out from the hot tub and comparing it to the temperature of mains water and run the heat pump and see how long it's gonna take to recharge that cylinder to 45 degrees. I want you to make a guess now. Go to the comment section and tell me what do you think the time in minutes is going to be to recharge that cylinder from cold to 45 degrees and also tell me at what cop is my 5 kilowatt heat pump going to run that cycle. The domestic hot water cycle has kicked in and we will come back to see the results later on in the video. I've also made a massive mistake. I did not realize that I can't separate my uh, cup of heating and hot water. It's one combined cup and the only way to see efficiencies of hot water is to go to every single day and mark the period of hot water cycles to see what efficiencies they run at. I should have ordered an extension kit for my uh, monitoring setup that would allow me to automatically store that data uh, for heating and hot water. So I've spoke to Tristan from Open Energy Monitor and I will install a device that will allow me to uh, automatically uh, detect when the hot water is done, when the heating is done and keep two sets of data separately for heating and hot water. Should have done it before doing this video, didn't think about it, uh, live and learn. And now if you want to check the results of the last eight days, go to the link below Open Energy Monitor and go to the date 12th of July, 20 past six. That's when it ran the first cycle, recharging the store from cold, because it was installed, run for the first time on the cylinder to 45 degrees in one hour, 10 minutes at a cup of 4.98. So at the cup of close to five, which is a very respectable result. What I also noticed is that it's extremely difficult to compare the data between the dual cylinder and a heat geek cylinder. And if you want to do it for yourself, everything before the 12th of July is the dual cylinder. Everything after is the heat geek cylinder. However, don't go past 20th of July. Reason being, we're going to test the minister after that date. So 21st is today, 21st of July. You can go and check our recharge that we're going to try to do it as fast as possible between 12th and 20th is as efficiently run hot water as I could. Anything before 12th of July, 2024 is dual. My initial observations are that heat geek seems to be around 10 to 15% more efficient with the same external conditions and same settings. But you're all welcome to analyze that uh, data for uh, yourself. It's available to, to anyone. It's time to see who got the cylinder recharge time and efficiency right time it took to recharge the cylinder was 56 minutes and efficiency COP of 4.7 which is more than I expected on a full output on that heat pump. What's very interesting is though we set the offset to 20 so the flow was targeting 20 over the actual store temperature. In real life if you look at the graphs that flow could never go higher than five degrees over the actual store temperature, 
What it means is that the heat exchanger that's sitting there is so huge, it was soaking all that energy, never allowing heat pump to run hotter than five degrees to what the actual store temperature in the one third of the cylinder was. And I think that efficiency is pretty good for 20 degrees outside and you need running uh, full output. Now, keep an eye on a video coming very, very soon on the test on the mini store. And if you want to see this last run, you just go to Open Energy Monitor and find a hot water cycle that's run on the 21st of July. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.